good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for that welcome. Um, my wife, Dawn Otten Sweeney, has asked me once again to um, share some things with you in kind of a longer format than I normally do. So, you know, if you'd bear with me a moment, I'll try to keep this brief, but um, share with you some, uh, a few things, um, kind of some observations. And today I'm going to talk about, um, you know, treating your business like a job. And, and before I get into that, uh, for some of you that don't know me, um, my wife of the past soon to be 23 years, I think 23, uh, is Dawn Otten Sweeney, a National Sales Director with Mary Kay Cosmetics. And uh, Dawn and I met when we were both undergrads at the University of Michigan. And Dawn has been involved in this business for, I think, well, it's over 20 years now. Uh, I believe it'll be 22 years, well, very soon. Today's the 14th of May, so I think the 19th of May will be her 22nd anniversary. Uh, time flies. But uh, before we begin talking about the Mary Kay uh, portion of this, I'd like to share with you a little bit of, of my background. Um, I was a, uh, a scholarship football player for a gentleman by the name of Bo Schimbeckler while at the University of Michigan. And uh, like I said, that's where I met my wife. And we, uh, after that, I embarked on a career as a federal agent uh, the same exact day that Dawn signed her consultant's agreement with Mary Kay uh, in May of 1986. And I served as a federal agent in different capacities uh, for 10 years. Uh, I started my career in Douglas, Arizona as United States Border Patrol agent. And from there I moved to uh, South Georgia to be a physical techniques instructor at the uh, Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. And at the uh, ripe old age of 33, after 10 years in government service, I... Um, left and, um, you know, became a, a husband and a father and, a, and a, a, a hopefully a, a business person. You know, some of that went well, some of it didn't go so well. But the reason I'm giving you a little bit about my background, uh, I'm going to shed some things and, and draw some parallels to some of the stuff that I've seen uh, in business and life and, and apply them to the, the Mary Kay world. Um, as I said, I was with the federal government for 10 years for the past well, 10 years now, going on 12 years, um, I, I became a manufacturer's rep and, and started a business, and then that sense has kind of ramped itself up. And for the last two years, um, I've gotten back into, uh, I wasn't really into it before, but I've become a personal trainer. And uh, when I was with the federal government, uh, I was a PT instructor, which I guess is kind of like, you know, the, the drill instructor you may see in, uh, in the movies, but I was that for federal agents. So personal training has, has been a passion of mine, and, and like I said before, I've um, I've applied myself, you know, wholeheartedly at being a supportive Mary Kay husband, a husband to Dawn, and a father to our two teenage children, Jake and Allie. And a lot of the things that, that I'm going to, you know, draw parallels from in life, but it's also about some of the books that I read. I'm a voracious reader, uh, you know, I always have been. And, you know, a guy once told me at a seminar, he said, you, you will become, if you want a glimpse into the future, you'll be able to see what kind of a person you can become, or you will become, by the people you hang around with and the books that you read. And I try to hang around with good people, and uh, you know, God puts them in my path, but I also try to read good books too. And a couple of the books that I'm going to share um, from today, uh, one of them is a, is a book called Lessons and Leadership, uh, Lessons, Leadership Lessons, and it was written uh, right at the time Bo Schimbeckler passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, he and another guy wrote it. And the other book that I read and have read for the past 10 years is, uh, is the Bible. And, uh, you know, a few years ago I made a commitment to, in my spiritual life, to make it as disciplined and as enthusiastic as uh, the time that I put into my physical uh, life. So I, I get a lot of good things from uh, that book, and I'm going to share with you some stuff on leadership from Bo Schimbeckler's book, because I think it's very pertinent not only to football, but also to business. So without further ado, uh, as I said, I'm going to talk about treating your business like a job. And, and for a long time, I've been around Mary Kay people. In fact, uh, in a couple of days, Dawn and I will be leaving for Sydney, Australia on the uh, National Sales Director trip, and we're very excited about that. So we're going to be hanging out with some Mary Kay people and some of Dawn's peers and some of our closest friends. And uh, we're real excited about that. But being around those people uh, for the period of time that I've been blessed to be around them, I've always heard them say, you know, treat their business like a job. And I thought, well, that 
that's kind of cool. That's, that's kind of a good way of looking at it. And so I spent some time looking into this and thinking about this when Dawn asked me to share uh, at her Get Your Year in Gear in January. And if you look at what exactly a job is, the definition of a job is a specific task done with agreement for pay. So, you know, we talk about for pay. You know, that's your livelihood generally, you know, for money. Not a hobby, but a profession. And if you so choose to do something professionally, uh, you know, you can count on three things happening or three things that you'll probably have to agree to. And the first one is, is a time commitment. You know, and the question they'll ask is, well, how much time will you be working? You know, and the next thing is uh, a schedule, a set schedule. You know, what days will you be working? When will you have vacation days? When are you expected to be there? What's the sick leave policy? Do you have holidays off? These are types of things that you know when you go into a job. And then number three is compensation. You know, show me the money. How much money are you willing to pay me for my time, my services, or the products that I, uh, that I offer? So we have time commitment, a set schedule, and compensation. Now, my next question is, who agrees or who determines, you know, these elements of the job? And it's generally the boss, the person who is in charge, the person that's in control um, of an employee, which can be you, maybe not, you know. So you have to agree that it would be very foolish to take a job without a clear picture of these very important elements. So, we're here today, you know, you're listening to this CD because you either are involved in Mary Kay, maybe at a, at a, at a beginning level, an entry level, or you're, you're possibly a sales director or even a national sales director. Um, and so you are a, not an entrepreneur. I don't like to use that word. Sometimes I think that's overblown, but that's in fact in what you are. But you're a, you know, a skin care professional, uh, be it new or, or be it a veteran. But as a business owner, which is what you, you are, you have the power to make uh, the important decisions that we just went over. The time commitment, the schedule, and the compensation. Yet oftentimes we don't actively sit down and hash those out. So it's, it's like, you know, taken off on a road trip without a map or without a navigation system and not knowing where you're going. You need to identify these things because they would certainly be identified if you were taking a job. Now you own your own business. You even have to be more focused because if you look at the amount of businesses that start and fail, it's a high percentage. So my point is you need to um, set down and identify these things and a lot of times we don't seek obvious resources and the best resources for when we do this. So if you came into the Mary Kay business, you were obviously brought in to this business from someone. Possibly you met someone at a skincare class, uh, you were recruited by somebody warm booked, I don't know what you know the newest terms are in this, but somehow someone saw something in you that led them to believe you might be good at this. Or quite possibly, in some cases, maybe um, that person that was holding the skin care class or, or maybe even you, you, you uh, decided, hey, you know what, I'd like to give this a try. You know, maybe if this person could be successful, so could I. Not, not making fun of anybody, but you know, some people got into the business for that very reason. Uh, that's one of the reasons I got into the personal training business. I saw some of the people that hung out in these clubs and gyms and I thought, you have got to be kidding me. They may look the part, but they certainly don't know what they're doing. But I don't want to get going on that. So my point is, there are some good mentors right out there. They brought you in the business. They've been through this. They started their business like you did. They had apprehensions. They had some possible, you know, some initial fears, um, things of that nature. And one of the things that, that I think is very important um, that you, when you begin this business and you sit down and you talk about your time commitment and your schedule and the compensation, is you discuss that with the person that brought you in. And that person could be, you know, your senior consultant, it could be your sales director, it could even be your national sales director. Uh, and I'm not certain who you have access to, but, you know, seeking people that have been successful 
is, is the bottom line mentorship. And those are the people you should see. You know, we run into people a lot of times. There are people out there that will steal your dream. And those aren't the people that you want to sit down with and share your great new business plan with or your business ideas with. You want to go to someone who, who is in, it's in their best interest to teach you how to be successful at this business. And that's one of the great things about this, this Mary Kay opportunity is you can actively be involved in someone um, helping them out uh, their betterment, and you benefit from that betterment. So it's it's an awesome it's an awesome system. One of the questions I'm asked when I when I go out and talk to people, or when I'm just in conversation, when they find out a little bit about my background, is they talk about, well, tell me a you know tell me a Bo Schimbeckler story, or tell me a football story, or tell me some of the things you you know you were able to get um, from you know playing with with Coach Schimbeckler and and these types of things. And you know, there's a lot. Some are fit for. Um, public discussion and some aren't but one of the things that that definitely is and that he ingrained uh, in me and us as former players and why we respect him and, and, and loved him so much even though there were times we didn't we didn't love him but he taught us the importance of goals and using goals as your uh, your roadmap or your navigational beacon if you will to success and, and one of the things that we did when I got to Michigan when I was a freshman and I was fortunate enough to, to play early in my career and, and, and actually play as a freshman and, and have a four-year career and, and play in 48 consecutive games while I was at Michigan, was we sat down before the season started and he gave us two like notebook cards, note cards, in a little wallet. And one, side, one part of those goals was our, were our personal goals, our academic goals, our athletic goals, and our, our short-term goals, if you will. And then the second part was our team goals and what we wanted to do as a team and we collectively sat down uh, and 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 put these together and there were two copies and he would take a copy of our personal goals and he would take a copy of our of our team goals and we also had this little wallet card and we also retained a copy of those so we could look at them from time to time and and if we went in during the course of the year to have you know conversations or meetings with the coaching staff based on what we were doing and kind of after spring practices and things like that he would pull that out those uh, file card or file box of those and we would look at those goals together and that would help me well remember what you said here remember what you wrote here how are how are these things going and we could gauge them well lo and behold after four years at michigan um, each player that goes through the program is awarded a gold m ring and it's a huge dinner and there's a couple thousand people there and at that dinner you know Bo introduced me as, as a graduating senior and he brought up one of the goals that was on the top of my list for my athletic um, performance was to play in 48 consecutive games and he publicly affirmed that after four years my number one goal and I remember sitting there going thinking about this going wow that is powerful but I also look back at that I looked at those goals on almost a daily basis during the course of my career. And that kind of helped me to fulfill what I wanted uh, to do. And my academic goal, of course, was to graduate on time with my classmates. And I don't mean my teammates. I mean my classmates at the University of Michigan uh, that didn't play football. So I had to compete in the, in the, in the academic uh, area, too. But these goals, you know, letting them guide you and they can be very small at the beginning or they can be very large but you know one of the things that the characteristics that I've always noticed about Dawn and her success is she's had clear-cut goals from the time she started this business um, to where she is now and even you know for the next 25 years or however long she's going to be until um, she has to retire from a position of um, you know, of leadership within this company so it's very important to to have those those types of goals now, one of the other things that um, you need to talk about, I, I touched upon it earlier, is the mentorship program. But in order, if you, if you want to become a leader in this business, and, and you basically will because, you know, it'll just, it'll begin, you know, your career as a consultant and then possibly, a, a, I guess it's a senior consultant and then a, a red jacket and all the different steps. You know, you'd think I'd know a little bit more about this, seeing those lineups and being at sales meetings once in a while. And, and I want to clarify something. My involvement... Um, in my wife's businesses is not on a daily basis by any stretch of the imagination but I am around it a lot and, and see her doing it so I do know a little bit probably just enough to make me dangerous but one of the things that you talk about leadership is you have to prepare uh, to be a leader and the way to, to do that is to 
have a mentor in the business, generally someone that's at a higher level than you, that has actually done the things that you're doing. You know, and you look at this and you know, you want to get a mentor, make it be someone, you know, higher that's been successful or some a person that's in a position that you aspire to be in. And one of the things that I always look back on when I was in, in the federal government is they would hire outside consultants to to come in and mentor us and teach us how to do stuff. And I often wondered, how can someone who's never done what I'm doing or will ever do what I'm doing be able to tell me how to do my job because they did some kind of study on it or something? You know, your, your mentorship and leaders should be people that have done or are doing what you're doing. And you can model that after them. And they've, they've been through the same struggles. The, also, this, this uh, mentor can help you set up your time, can set up your schedule, your goals, and determine your, your financial needs. And we go back and we tie those in with your time commitment, your schedule, and your compensation. It's going to be in her best interest to teach you how to effectively achieve these goals based on how much time you're willing to spend at this, your schedule that you're willing, and how much money you're willing to make. So it all ties together. So what I'm saying is use the experience and leadership that your senior consultant, your director, or your national sales director has had. That person has been down this road before. Now, we talk a little bit about mentoring. That mentoring sometimes can be very tough. I mean, I'm sure there are times in our lives where we look back and we had some tough experiences while being mentored. I know when I was um, an athlete, I had some rather painful conversations with my coaches, maybe some stuff that I didn't want to hear. And, you know, and I might not be where I was or where I wanted to be at that time. And I had guys who weren't shy to tell me, well, here's why you're not there. And the same thing can hold true in this business. So kind of thicken up your skin a little bit. If you're, if you're not you know, achieving what you want to achieve and your words and actions are not lining up, you, know, you bring those things to the table with your mentor or your leader or whoever it may be and be prepared to hear, you know what, well you say you want to do this, but you know what, you're not doing the activity level, you're not getting the new names, you're not getting the bookings, you know, you're not even attending sales meetings. If you had a real job, would you miss important meetings? Would you miss company functions? You know, one of the great things, the benefits that, that my wife has had in this business is, you know, she was in this company, well, 20 or, 20 or so years ago. She knows Mary Kay personally. I've had the opportunity to meet her and travel on trips with her. And there was nothing, you know, she was an unbelievably blessed woman and, and just is, is great, but everything was really fundamental with her. You know, a great product, sell the product, sell the opportunity, you know, do things the right way, keep it simple, fundamentals, and you'd be successful. So you look at that, and people that are in the business world or athletics or anywhere, they do the daily fundamental things to get better. One of the things that Schimbeckler used to tell us is, you don't stay the same, you either get better or you get worse. And I remember seeing a sign one time, have you done something to improve yourself today? And that means in all areas, not just your Mary Kay business, that means physically, spiritually, mentally. Are you doing things, are you seeking improvement on a daily basis? You know, there comes a time in this business where you have to make a decision and get to work. You know, what I say is put your hand to the plow. And, and I, I see people that, you know, aren't showing up at company events. One of the things that I learned from one of the retired national sales directors a lady named Daylene White, who was actually Mary Kay's first, you know, consultant and first director and first national sales director. And she was, you know, she's an old Texas uh, farm girl, you know, who did well and a wonderful friend of ours. And she would always say, you know, the sales meetings, you know, the company functions, be it the, the leadership or career conference or seminar, those are not negotiable things. You know, if you had a real job, and this is a real job, you know, if your business, if you're, if you're serious about it, you would not miss those at work. If you had a boss, you would find a way to attend those meetings, and life would happen. And, and you have to, I, you know, look at this business in the same way, and you can, you can have the same kind of success. But if you don't, if you, you know, get in the business yourself, and you, you know, you don't do these things, it's not a surprise why you're not going to have the success that you may aspire to have. So, enough said about that. 
Um, you know, the thing that I ask is, would you know, some people don't go to these things. Would there be this selective involvement? Uh, would that be tolerated in a real job? And, and most likely it's not. And I realize this hasn't been the, the warm and fuzzy part of the training, but I want to talk a little bit about, you know, mentorship a little bit more. And I'm sure in the, in the 20 plus years that Dawn's been in, there's been some conversations with her senior national sales director, um, Debbie Moore, great woman, a great friend of ours, that haven't always been warm and fuzzy. You know, there have been times where Debbie's given some advice and maybe it's been received and maybe it hasn't. That's all part of the growth process. I mean, I'm, I've never been one to get up and, and say, this is a get-rich-quick scheme, this is an easy business, because it's not. I liken the Mary Kay opportunity and the business to athletics. You've got to prepare, you've got to train, and you've got to go out every day and do something to make yourself better if you're going to be successful at this business. But what wonderful rewards you can get from doing that and impacting people's lives. Um, and, and, you know, you listening to me, I'm obviously not shy, I'm obviously not humble, but there's been some very humbling uh, conversations that I've had with some mentors in my life and some unlikely mentors, you know, and, and I just thank God that, that he had put people in my life that were able to take some of these relational risks, if you were, you know, to keep me in line, and you're going to have those people in your life, and hopefully in your Mary Kay business, that will help keep you in line and keep you successful at this. You know, I remember a time, it's been over 20 years now, I was a 25-year-old um, young federal agent and Dawn was a, a new sales director and we, we didn't have children yet and we were living in a beautiful house on St. Simons Island, Georgia and, and our careers were, you know, in overdrive. And there was a gentleman at work that worked with me and we were kind of in the same capacity at the time. And he was an older gentleman, and, and um, he'd been a professional athlete, so I did respect him on that. And he and I used to compete athletically, and we became, you know, pretty good friends. And we were talking one day, and, uh, and he said, wow, you know, 25 years old, you're a young supervisor, your wife's got a successful business, you know, life is good. And I'm, of course, you know, naturally in my humility, I was, I was agreeing with him, you know, hard work, dedication, and all this kind of stuff. And he said, you know, and physically, look at you, you're in great shape, you're an athlete, you're, your body's still, you know, intact, and, and yeah, I, you're right, you know, I was agreeing, and I was all, and he said, but you know what, until you have it spiritually, my friend, you know, you have nothing. Of course, at the time, I didn't have a, a, a spiritual, you know, walk or, or anything to speak of. And I, I kind of was, I was upset. I was mad. I, what are you doing judging me, you know? And I got my own thing and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, lo and behold, you know, a few years later, after some life things happened, and all of a sudden I realized that is an important part, or for me anyway, uh, has become an important part of my life. Um, down the road... I sought this guy, you know, just a couple of years ago. I found him. I called him up on the phone and I said, you know something? I want to thank you for giving me that tough love back in the day. And I started out by saying, do you remember? And he stopped me. And he said, I remember exactly. And he named the time and the place and actually remembered the actual conversation that he had with me about that very topic. And that was very powerful. And I'm very thankful that he had the, the relational, you know, strength to, you know, give me that advice because it has definitely helped me. So, you know, if you, if you seek a mentor and they're going to be honest with you, prepare for some tough love because it'll be some stuff that you may not want to hear, some things that you may want to change that will make you successful. So I, I urge you, that's going to happen on your journey. And I'm going to go back and talk a little bit more about goals before we finish up. But involve people around you, uh, hopefully your loved ones or your family, you know, involve them in your goals. We had a situation, and when I talk about that, sometimes there's going to be people, folks, and it's going to be people close to you that may not be supportive of your new endeavor. And that's normal, and don't take it personally, and don't let it, you know, create a bitter seed. But I'm talking about more so where involving people in your goals and get, having a tangible prize at the end of the hard work that you're willing to put in 
while pursuing your dreams and goals. And one of the things that we did as a family, I, and I've been supportive of Don's success because, well, basically, you know, we needed uh, you know, Don to be successful because I wasn't the highest paid guy when I was a federal agent until I worked myself up. And this has always been a money-making business for us. It's never been a hobby, you know, and that's good. I think we've always played scared on that in that arena, and that's good. And it still is a, a money-making, send your kids to school, live a nice lifestyle. It is what we do, is what my wife does for compensa comp you know, compensation, but I say what we do because I will do everything you know, to help her be successful at this because I obviously benefit from it. But my point is this, is when Dawn was going through qu the qualification process to become a national sales director, which I'm here to tell you is not an easy thing because if it was, there'd be a lot more than whatever the number is, 150 or 200 national sales directors. But it was, it was a tough period. It was a period I look back on and you know, some things were bad and some things were good, but it was tough. But what we did as a family is we said, okay, we're going to get through this period, but at the end of this period, we're going to do something really special. And our kids were um, you know, early teenagers at, at the time. I, I'm not really certain, but we decided that we were going to take a 10-day vacation, the four of us, and we were going to rent a house in Maui and celebrate Dawn becoming a national sales director. So we rented a beautiful house and the kids helped us find it and then they had a, a huge pool and an 80 foot water slide and an underground cave and like its own little water park and a basketball court and it had plasma TVs back before plasma TVs were an everyday deal. It was a beautiful place on the north shore of Maui. And so when the times were tough and Dawn was working hard and she was traveling and working with her people and I was, you know, you know, home with the kids and and and, and doing my my part, you know, and the kids were like, well, mom's out, you know, on the road again or, you know, whatever it was, we always said, hey, but you know what, for two weeks or ten days over Christmas, the four of us are going to go to go to Hawaii and we're going to be hanging out at the beach and we're going to be traveling and doing great stuff. And that kept us focused. You know, so my point is involve others in your goals. Involve others. Have some tangible things out there. So when you work through these things, I look back at some of the, um, you know, a lot of times it, the people say, well, it's not the actual destination, it's the journey. And as I look back, you know, that's the fun, being able to get through these tough times, hang together, you know, collectively, and get to a point. And you know what, you look back, it's not so much the journey when you get there, it's it's not so much the destination, I'm sorry, it's the journey. So by all means, involve other people. And the last top topic I want to talk about, you know, is your attitude. And I know you've heard these catchy things, you know, your, your attitude, you know, determines your altitude or altitude, attitude, whatever it is. I mean, it's so trite that I don't even get it right. But the thing that, that I think that we need to talk about is your attitude has a direct effect on the people that you wish to lead or are supposed to be leading. In, in some instances. You know, what does your attitude say about your job, your career, your, uh, your outlook on life, your mental state? Um, it, 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 it certainly does, and sometimes we take that for granted. I mean, the other thing that you talk about is, is have you done or are you willing to do the things that you recommend or tell your people to do for you people that are leadership? You know, do your actions and words line up? Because there will be people. There are people watching you daily. I had an interesting, interesting story happen the other day. Interesting thing happened to me while I was, uh, while I was training. Uh, you know, I have. I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have. I'm a personal trainer now, and I have a, a successful business, and I love it. I mean, I'm passionate about it. I've got 32 people that I train, all different sizes and shapes and abilities, and, and I was training, and I train people from 5 a.m. until like 11 a.m. four or five days a week. And you're probably asking yourself, what kind of a crazy person would meet with you at five? Five in the morning to train. Well, you know, thank God I have them, and that's a good time to work out because you know what, places aren't crowded then. But I, I, I recently have moved my business to a, a personal training studio, which which is um, is awesome. But before I moved over there, I was at a pretty good sized gym, and um, I have my people come in one right after the other. And I was with one of my people early in the morning, and one of my new clients came in, and. Uh, you know, she came in and it's 7 o'clock in the morning and her hair's done and her makeup's on and her nails are looking good and she's got a, you know, fancy little windsuit on and everything and she's ready to go. And one of my long-term people says, what time do you figure she has to get up in the morning 
to do her hair or makeup and to look like she does when she comes in here. And I, you know, I'm thinking about it for a second. I said, well, I don't know. But you know what this woman does, the one who's all dressed up? She's a professional hairstylist at an upscale salon in metropolitan Detroit. So she looks the part. Now, she may not like to do that stuff, but she makes it part of her day. And, you know, I, I shared this story with her, and she said, absolutely. She's gotten a lot of business by looking good. So, you know, if you're selling, you know, Mary Kay Cosmetics and you really believe in the product, take the time to make yourself look sharp and act sharp. You know, I, I come from the athletic background, and I coach my son's AAA travel hockey team, and there's a guy who sometimes irritates us once in a while. He's with another team, and he's always saying, look sharp, play sharp. I'm like, please, you know. But, you know, he has a point. You know, his team and then his teams that he coach, their uniforms look good, their guys are well behaved, they've got a good attitude. And I know this is a little thing, but sometimes we have to understand if we're in a position of leadership uh, or aspire to be, there are people that look to us or are looking at us. Um, I, I liken it to the personal training business. I don't ask people to do things that I have not done or ca are capable of doing at that very point in time. You lose credibility when that happens. So... So by all means, you know, what does your attitude say about you? Ask yourself that question. You know, your, the look on your face, the way you walk, the way you present yourself. You can do a, um, you can have a lot of success just by showing up and having a good attitude. And, you know, there are times, believe me, folks, there are times when you know you're not hitting on all cylinders. But, um, you know, try to do the best you can do. Enough said. Um, you know, so the thing that I guess your attitude towards your business is less than professional. How can you expect those around you to treat your business professionally if you don't treat it that way? And I hear some people say, well, you know, my family says that, you know, this isn't, you know, it's your own business, so why don't you miss out on these things? And I'm not going to bang on this real long. But, yeah, as, as a self-employed business owner, you are able to pick and choose when you work and when you don't. I came from a government type job where I had a job and there was no choice and I had to be there. And I left and got into an entrepreneurial venture and I found myself saying, well, I'm going to take today off. I'm going to play golf. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go on the field trips. I'm going to do this. And you can find yourself becoming a professional recreation person and then try to fit your business into it later. Having the freedom to choose when and where we do things is awesome. But there also has to be a time where you pick and choose to work. And you may not have or you know, the opportunity to do all of these things. Because if you had a real job, you wouldn't be able to do all the things that you want to do. So my point is to pick and choose. I see a lot of people get very defensive about stuff. I'm going to do this and I'm going to be on this field trip and I'm going to do this. Well, that's fine. And by all means, I'm not saying don't do it. But there have been times where I've gone on the trips and Dawn's worked or she's gone on the trips and I've been working. So we, you need to pick and choose when you do these types of things. Because, folks, you know, I go back to the job thing. If you had a job and a boss you probably wouldn't be able to take a lot of the time that you take to do other things. So please keep that in mind. And, and I said I was going to quit soon, so I am. There's one last thing I want to touch upon. Um, when you are out there working and your business is, is, is working and you're impacting people and you're impacting your, lot, your family's life financially, expect challenges and conflicts and dilemmas. It's going to happen. Um, you know, if you were working, once again, another job, you'd have no choice but to find ways to handle the everyday problems that will arise. Those problems will arise if you have a job and work for someone else, and those problems will uh, arise when you work for yourself. So please keep that in mind. Um, understand that when you're involved in something significant, these conflicts will happen. I mean, it's a biblical principle. There's, there's things in the Bible that talk about, you know, you can expect adversity, you have an enemy, and, and he will seek you out and try to, you know, slow you down. And believe me, it happens in the Mary Kay world also, especially as you continue to progress through 
because uh, I've heard a person say, new level, new devil, and that certainly holds true. So your conflicts are going to be there. You're going to have disagreements with your coworkers, and you're not going to agree with some of your people and your family. You're going to have situations with your kids and your wife. But, you know, find a way to get through them and keep going because if you had a normal career, I, mean, I call it a normal career, but a job, you'd have to get through these situations too. Um, I, I read a, another book recently and it has a quote and I think it, it kind of holds true for the Mary Kay world and I'll just sum up with this before I leave um, it's a book from uh, it's a book called Shadow Divers and it's about a couple of Americans that actually found a sunken Nazi U-boat or submarine from World War II off the New Jersey coast and it's a great book about their um, about a 10 year period of discovering this and identifying it and getting a history and the, the, the turmoils and the adversity they faced while you know discovering this in 250 feet of water 20 some miles off the coast and it's just a great great story but one of the guys had a quote that he stuck with during the hard times and they went through marriage problems and financial problems and the death of some other guys on their team while doing all the research and finding this ship but it's really a neat story and one of the things that he held to um, he had a sign in his office and, and it says this and I'll leave you with this it says excellence is born of preparation dedication focus and tenacity compromise on any of these and you become average so I just Thank you for the time that I was able to spend with you guys, and, and I wish you all the best, and may God continue to bless you, and thank you so much. Have a great day.